thanks for coming to the fifth lecture in this mini course. Um, my original plan was to discuss today uh, that class equalization and uh, heat flow and uh, applications of the H minus one inequality. But now I think that this plan was a bit too ambitious and uh, I'll stick to our tradition of discussing one technique per one hour lecture. So today we discuss only done stochastic equalization. So this is a, a technique in, in convex geometry that was uh, invented by Ronan Eldan in his PhD some, some 10 years ago. And we also discuss uh, two applications. One is to um, uh, concrete type inequalities in spirit of the uh, conjecture of uh, KLS, kind of Simonovich. And the second application will be to uh, uh, complex waste inequalities, um, not so far from common state inequality. And these two applications are somewhat parallel to the applications we discussed um, uh, three lectures ago. Uh, in the, this lecture about convex equalization, uh, where we proved the Peyman Bagheera version of, of, of Poincare inequality and, and gross waste inequality. And indeed, this technique borrows a lot from, from, from convex localization. So let me begin by reminding you a bit about uh, uh, convex localization. So, the idea there was to uh, start with some, some, some convex set. Um, K in Rn, or some local cave measure on that convex set, and to bisect it using some hyperplane. So H was a hyperplane, and it uh, divides space into two, two half spaces. This is uh, H plus, and this is H minus. And we do it again, 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 okay? And, and so what's the issue of, of how to choose the, I mean, okay, in any specific application, you need to, 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 to choose the hyperplane uh, uh, differently or to find a different cutting rule. So for instance, uh, when we prove the Poincare type inequality, we had some function F on the convex set and we, chose the, uh, the hyperplane so that the average of F here and here would be the same number. This was one possibility. And when you prove Gromov's waste inequality, we had some more elaborate uh, condition about how to choose the hyperplanes. And, and basically what we did, in the, and when we uh, did the reverse Hilton inequality, basically what we did was to um, kind of use topological, use a little topology or, or something like a Borsu column kind of to solve an equation. So we had some freedom in choosing the hyperplane and we use the freedom to, to make some requirements that something here equals something there. That, that was basically the, the, the approach that we had. Okay, so this was three lectures ago, and today we'll modify this scheme in, in, in two ways. Um, so modify uh, follows. So first of all, uh, to be a, a um, random localization. So we'll not use any little topological argument, but we'll choose uh, dive planes randomly. Okay, this makes sense, of course. Uh, and here to be more, okay, let's let me make them through the virus center just because um, it would be slightly more important than, than before. Before, um, okay. All right, so so this will be some some choice that I have to have to choose for. And the second, uh, Modification is that going to be continuous localization. What do I mean by continuous localization? The idea is that in place of just cutting, uh, there is some kind of just much more mild reweighting. Uh, reweight. What do I mean by reweight? Um, I, I mean the following. So um, suppose that, that um, okay, suppose that we have this measure mu here. Um, this has density uh, 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 rho of x, maybe, low concave. Maybe p, p is a better, let me, today it's called p and not rho. Low concave and uh, bp is its barrier center. So bp is the inter low concave probability and bp is its barrier center. Then what we did, so, so we start with a measure mu with the density p of x, 
And in the context of equalization, what we did is we would replace if we replace p by the p times the indicator of half space. So there was maybe this direction is theta. So we look at all points where uh, x time x minus the Barry center let's say, times theta is, is, is positive or negative plus minus. So this was the two halves, right? This was the this is what we did in the case of of, of equalization. So we cut very sharply, and then we're just going to reweight with some little functional. So there'll be some uh, in the continuous version. So there'll be some parameter epsilon, and we replace p by uh, p times some a fine functional very close to the constant one. So one plus or minus epsilon times x, the linear functional in the direction of theta. Okay, so 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 this is this is much, much milder than cutting, right? We just say give a bit more weight here to the plus side and a bit less weight to the to the to the minus side. Okay, so that these are the two chains that we're going to apply to this scheme. And let's observe is that if you do this continuous localization with these two options of the plus and the minus, then we obtain uh, uh, we obtain two measures. Um, I claim that both of them are log-concave. So I'll explain why log-concave. Both are probability, that's because of the Barrett center. Uh, measures whose average is the original measure uh, p or mu, let's say, okay, mu, whose average is mu. Why is that? So why is it probability? That's because of the bar center. So if you look on the, the, the whatever you added, because this is the bar center BPs and this average to zero, okay, at least say, say assume that mu is completely supported and epsilon is small. So that nothing will be negative. That's not serious thing. Will I mean, to be irrelevant in a second. So if 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 this so if complex one is epsilon is small, then this is always non-negative at least. So that's integrated to zero. That's a probability measure just because of the Barry center. And why is it log concave? That's because the on on the real line, the function and a fine function is log concave, right? Log of uh, a x plus b. If it's if it's positive, that's a, the second derivative is, is, is negative, right? So that, that's a concave function, and also the other one, both of them, the sum to one because plus and minus, and and both of them are, are log concave. So we multiply some log concave density by log concave. So this this is again log concave. Okay, um, so this is the uh, that's that's one step of the of the stochastic equalization, and now the idea is to uh, repeat recursively. So we do it again, again, again. We keep choosing theta and keep multiplying by this, uh, um, by some linear affine functional. And what you get is, is the discrete time version uh, localization process. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take epsilon to zero in, a, in ten minutes. So, so yeah, let's make it the same in reverse. Right. So, so let let let's just fix some some small epsilon. Yeah. But the, the, oh, yeah, right, right, yeah, the, yeah, right. But okay, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. right. Sorry. Like what you go so far is. Is I mean, sure, I didn't specify the process. That's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm going to be more and more specific. As, as time. So right, but 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 still, let me be specific enough to say that epsilon is fixed in all stages. Okay. And that's I wanted to make that. And, and also, I'm not sure if I want to call it epsilon or delta t. Let me call it delta t. Okay, both. So just so fix such a thing, and suppose that we start uh, with some density. Let's call it p, which p of x, which is also p zero. And let's define. Uh, P, so the next one, p of t plus delta t of x, what will it be? It will be this thing. So it will be the, the old one times one uh, plus x minus b of pt times plus or minus of uh, epsilon. So let me put root of delta t just to 
hint at what's, what's going to be in, in, in a second. Okay, and and these things are uh, these are just some z z epsilon z two epsilon etc. Are some um, centered independent random vectors? I can make them IAD if I want. Yeah. Uh, um, it, so you know, it's like constructing bar motion from random walk. The deal is not that matter because you want to take a limit. So if you take the random walk, the jumps, this, at the end you get the same bar motion, right? There's just one. Uh, random variables, and let's to be specific. Uh, let's say that they are uh, uniform in the sphere, in a sphere of radius. Uh, I make it radius root of root n, maybe, or maybe Gaussian. Okay, wait. The Gaussian is not going to be po okay. Let, for example, that thing. Okay, that's that's maybe this thing. Okay, so that's um, that's a stochastic process. Um, but still, I have lots of freedom in choosing these random directions, right? I mean, um, okay. But but just an easy, easy induction on this observation tells me something. It tells me that um, um, these are always uh, so PT is, 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 is so PT is a random measure. First of all, PT is a random uh, probability density. Right, I mean, there's lots of randomness in the construction of PT. It defines only for two which are multiples of epsilon. And with probability one, uh, it is uh, low concave, right, because by induction. And uh, the average of the PT, so it's a random probability density, and, and, and uh, the average of, of uh, um, so, okay, by induction, the average of PT plus delta T at X, so for X in Rn, Induction step tells that this is just PT, right? And at each step, the same and P0 of X. Okay, so, so in other words, we have uh, uh, the composition of the original measure into uh, a, a mixture of, of, let's say in this case, two to the T, to the T over epsilon, to the number of steps, or not two, because it's not, these are not discrete. We have a mixture of, of, of we have the composition of the original, this is the P0 into a mixture of, of, of various probability measures, and all of them are local K. In fact, not only you have this expectation, but in fact, this is a margin girl. Uh, so, so the uh, um, the expectation of of uh, pt plus delta t at x, conditioning or any future time, conditioning on the sigma algebra generated by uh, by, and this is the sigma algebra generated by the past. Okay, by Z zero, Z S, all of them up to time T. Okay, yes, one. Ah, you don't need that, right? If it's if it's centered, no need. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Right. Thanks. Um. Okay, so so um, that's what we get. We get this decomposition. Okay, everything here is I mean, nothing, nothing. Now, um, the reason I wrote this code relative to ZT is because um, things will be more convenient. You will see that it will be more convenient to pass to continuous time. Um, um, so, how would you pass to continuous time? So, this the formula will be much easier and many. So, and you will see that it's a, it's a process with some 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 characteristics. So first of all, um, I'll take a Brian motion, continuous time. So I'll take a Brian motion. Um, to be standard Brian motion Rn. Static from zero, say. And let's just rewrite this equation by, by um, so how would I would write it? So I, I want to understand. I want to write the differential equation in a second. So the difference between p t plus delta t and p t of x. What is it? This is um, p t times x minus b. Uh, if I write b t, I mean b of p t, by center of p t. Okay, just save my money. Times um, Okay, sort of delta t 
zitim, and if this Gaussian, you know that um, this is the increment of a Brownian motion. So the increment of a Brownian motion is, 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 is found Gaussian times. Um, so this is going to be replaced in a second by the increment of, of, of a Brownian motion. Um, now, the, the, the quality features of the discrete time process with, with uniform on the sphere and the continuous process with Brownian motion are pretty much the same. If you simulate in a computer, you use this process and not that one. Okay, um, but the formula are a bit easier here. So that's why I prefer to, to, to deal with this process. And that's what El Dan did and, and Vivian Pala and Chen, everybody works in this business. Sorry? This is white noise. He, like, if you think about. Um, okay, so let's. Um, so, so, what's the actual process that we investigate? Uh, so, it has quite a few versions, and we'll study the Live and Pala version. Okay, so we start. Okay, so so start with P zero and solve uh, the stochastic differential equation. Okay, so 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 the, the so dPt of x, the differential in, in T of PT of x should be pt of x, um, x minus b of pt, or b, okay, the body center, uh, the wt. This should hold simultaneously for all x in Rn, right? It's, you need to understand why this equation can be solved. But this is the, 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 the continuous angle of that equation. And there is slight, okay, so that's the even parallel version where you take your just white knot. I mean, this vector also just iid like here. And there is a version. Uh, there is also a version with a driving matrix, a more general version. So uh, where you solve uh, with a driving matrix, so it's called, which would be a process which is adapted to the filtration of the binary motion. No. Much before, Ramon, Ramon, Ramon. This is the heat equation. This okay. goes, this goes. But this, it's solution. No, no, this way, this goes to the 18th century. Why do you say 19th? It's, it's not for the. I mean, so this, the, so, if you want, this, equa this equation is solved. You, no, it's the condition. If you look on, on this process, so there's a condition probability. So this goes back to the 18th century. I think that this is not the 20th century. Okay. Anyway, let's continue. So the equation. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's continue. So, um, so. Well, the equation is more general because you have um, a dynamic from X. Okay. So, so something a bit more general. Um, so sometimes I want to rely on myself, uh, uh, um, the flexibility of, of um, having some matrix here multiplying this. So I want the Gaussian not to be completely isotropic, but want to make it uh, um, um, I want to make this uh, this Gauss. So that the thing that only matters is just kind of the covariance of this distribution. So sometimes I want to make this covariance distribution uh, not isotropic. I want to make some uh, Directions more preferable over the others, and sometimes I'm going to rule out completely some directions. Okay, so this is the idea of stock and dance localization, which is completely absent for any investigation by Stratonovich, by the way. This is the composition. Okay, now let's uh, let's discuss the okay, okay. um, okay, so now the the, the why, why is it useful to, to pass to the continuous limit? So first of all, not every, so there is some issue of uh, blow up in finite time. If you choose a driving matrix, which is, uh, 
to y in single probability finite time. But for this equation, there is no problem with, with, with the existence of uniqueness of Pong solution, mixed solution. And there is the following features of, of, of this solution. So with probability one, pt of x, this is, is p0 of x times some Gaussian factor. So this is something unexpected. So with Gaussian factor, I mean uh, e to the minus quadratic form. Uh, x, x plus e times x plus c. Okay, so we started with some, you know, multiplying some convex set with linear functional. In some way, claim and, and it looks when you look at this equation, oh wow, this is an equation in the space, in infinite dimensional space of all probability distribution. But no, even if you have a driving matrix, you will always live in a fine dimensional space, original measures times a Gaussian factor. That's much nicer than the discrete version. And in fact, in the living parallel version, um, where the, the driving matrix is just identity, I'm going to get something very specific. Um, I'm going to get minus t x to over two. Uh, so the, even the plus some, um, okay, uh, theta t x, some linear term um, over z t. Okay, so it's even a Gaussian um, where the, uh, uh, the Hessian term is just a uh, scalar matrix, okay? Uh, so it in particular, this is, is an, an, an times P0, which is low-concave. So in particular, this thing that we get here is more low-concave is a probability distribution. More low-concave Uh, than the Gaussian. Uh, and in fact, and okay, and we have the same, you know, multiple properties, so the expectation, okay, I'll just try this thing. For any excellent thing. Yes. Uh, uh, I just want to say that the Gaussian factor is, is a, I don't, some linear, something. Yeah, some linear term. Um, let me just, let, let's not give it a name. Oh, uh, no, 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 sorry. So I just want to say that, that, that the main point here is that the quadratic term yeah. is at any time steep. That's, that's the main thing. We don't care about the, um, okay. And now that's an important remark, which shows you the advantage of this process with compared to the context localization is that previously when you just did this by sections, we were pretty happy to say that we preserve convexity, right? After you cut each piece is convex or we preserve low concavity. Here, not only we preserve, but you actually gain we gain uniform local concavity. And if you remember from two lectures ago, when, it, when was Bochner from uh, last lecture, two weeks ago, um, we saw that uniform local cavity is, 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 is very useful thing. So in this business, we managed to decompose our measure into a mixture of things which are uniform local concave, which is, which is um, going to be useful. Okay, so let's prove this uh, remarkable. Let me only, only discuss this case. Um, yes. This is true, because like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, yes. So it's going, okay, very good. Uh, so uh, let me prove it first and then discuss the dynamic. It's going to be the delta and the center is going to be uniformly distributed according to the original measure that we started with. That's the, yeah, look, so it, it tends to a point, it's, and the point is, yeah. I'll discuss it after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me, let me prove the lemma. So you are, okay, let me prove it quickly. So by the eta form, okay, so I start with this equation, by the eta formula, um, let's see what this equation means about the log. So log of PT, or maybe, okay. Intuitively, when you multiply with two functionals, 
and the one with plus one minus, you'll get a quadratic term, right? I mean, kind of, I don't know, one plus epsilon x theta. So you, you plus times one minus, if you want to addition by that, this is e to the minus epsilon square x theta squared, right? I mean, you kind of, this average was gives you a quadratic thing with the exponent in many directions. So, so you kind of hope to, to get the quadratic uh, 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 term like this. And, and in the continuum, it's more, more clear because you have the Eto formula. So what is this? So log derivative is one over x, so one over pt times dpt, which is uh, ptx x minus dt dwt, uh, and plus the Eto term, which is, okay. Okay, uh, plus one half times log second derivative is minus one over x squared. So minus one over pt squared. Okay, uh, and then uh, I have multiplied by this thing squared. So pt squared, uh, x minus bt squared. And if you just, uh, what are the terms that you see here? So there is just one, everything is linear or, or, or not, does not depend on x. There is one quadratic term in x, so these things cancel, these things cancel. So you'll get a uh, minus half x squared dt. Now this is the correct term, the linear terms are, are x dwt here, minus uh, plus x bt dt, okay. Uh, plus terms that don't, don't depend on t, terms uh, constant in x. So this is a change in log pt and dt. And if I integrate in t, what would I get? Is that log uh, pt of x is log times zero. And this is a deterministic term, right? I mean, so just get to minus t over two x square plus some, okay, uh, uh, a fine function of, okay, uh, fine terms in x. Okay, and I think uh, at least this explains why why I get this quadratic term and the rest of public isn't uniqueness. I mean, I can, yeah, this, this I'll just leave it uh, for you. No. Yes, uh, but, all right, but it is multiplied by DWT. So if you differentiate that thing, it will be absorbed by this. And this is. Um, uh, no, I mean, what do you mean? No, no, I just, no, no, I differentiate log. Sorry, sorry. Well, that's what I said. I, I have the equation for, for PT and I just do log of PT. That's it. I, I, I applied, no, no, I just applied the eta formula for the log function. That's it. Okay, so if D of log of a process is, is D of X, D over X minus uh, the quadratic variation of no, no, sorry, no, no need to differentiate. Uh, okay, so what about dynamics? The rate of convergence. Yeah, it depends, right, right, right. Okay, so let's discuss the dynamics a bit. Yeah, right, so, so, so we said that, um, okay, so it looks like a uh, uh, time t. How does pt look? So pt uh, has uh, small, more local caves in Gaussian of, of one over t. So as t goes to infinity, it's, it's going to tend to a delta measure. This is true. Now let's look at the Barrett center. So bt, which is the integral of, of okay, x, pt, x, dx. If I, if I look at its evolution, so it's going to be, um, Okay, it's going to be the integral of x and here. Uh, um, um, so p the different um, x minus b p d w t. Okay, so that's a bit of and and what I'm, okay, it's going to be at the end the uh, the, the, the variation is going to be the covariance matrix where a t is the covariance matrix of p t. So. And so what we see is that the Barrett center of this 
Gaussian distribution is doing some, uh, first of all, it's a martingale. Okay, it is doing some, some, some wonders randomly. Since A T is smaller than one over T, I still remember we are more local caves than the Gaussian. So the covalence is small. Okay, so you see that this is a stochastic process of boundary quadratic variation, at least in the case where C T is identity. So there is a limit, B infinity, uh, which is the limit when T goes to infinity of B T, it exists almost surely. And uh, we know that the expectation of PT is always is P0, right? So we have a mixture of these PTs whose average is P0 and they tend to a delta. So it means that necessarily the center has to be squared according to mu. The time infinity is exactly delta. So B infinity is squared according to, to, to mu exactly. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, definition of, of this uh, stochastic uh, uh, localization. Um, okay, um, now how would you use this construction in order to prove as operability inequalities? So I, I wouldn't, I mean, um, I think this is the composition property of the original measure is, is, is new. I didn't see that having a much. Sure. That's pretty simple. For a big distribution, P T is the conditions are really just the exactly. Yeah. Sure. The process yeah. of the time T. Yeah. That's and right. it solves this equation. Yeah. So it's completely everything you put here is just complete non-mesh proof, right? I mean, it's obvious from logical assumption that it's just a bridge to a point delta measure. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. It's a bridge to X. Actually, okay. Right? But yeah. But you know. Okay. That's all right. Okay. Uh, but. But you know this. I mean, I'm sure this. This is. This is. I mean, this is. Uh, let's see. Cameron Martin did it before Sotonovich. This distribution is with Cameron Martin ten years before Sotonovich. This, if you want a paper. Second, yeah, in Cameron Martin you have that exact. Second, I mean, this is something. I mean, this is just the distribution of the of, of the heat equation. I mean, Sotonovich. Okay, that's that's a short. Okay. Anyway. That's before. So Cameron Martin is 10 years before Stotonovich. Is that a good at least? Cameron Martin has that. Exactly. Sure. That's the density. Right. Okay. Uh, anyway. But still, these are. Okay. Okay. But these things are. Okay. I mean, applications to Poincare inequalities and to anything to do with that? Okay. So that, that's why even Pala deserve. That's the contribution of the okay. But all of these equations are very good. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I wanted, yeah, that's the heat flow in some disguise. Okay, uh, this one is empty. So just the corollary, because we know that it's more local caves than, than the Gaussian, um, then uh, with probability one, we know that we have a spectral gap. So lambda of PT, right, is at least T. Just because Molo concave is in Gaussian. And second, uh, we prove the reverse trigger inequality. So we know that for any subset E in Rn, it's smooth boundary. If I look at uh, okay, smooth boundary, if I look at the um, at, at its boundary measure. So let me denote it by that notation that, that I use. I mean, I'm not sure it's super great, but this means that it's the integral over the boundary of the density. So we know that we have a transparentic inequality, which is root of t, right? So this is at least some constant, maybe I don't remember, one over five root or something, root, times the minimum of, of okay, I, I'll use their notation because I like one minus PT of E, well, this means the integral of PT over, over the set. Okay, good. So these things are, 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 are simple. And uh, the new contribution, if you want, of Lind and Pala, after all done, was that these things can be used to prove point carrying terms for the original measure. How would you prove Uh, isoperimetric or point current inequalities. Okay, I'll do this. They're the same here. For the original measure of P0. 
what will be the strategy? So you're going to, to argue as follows. So let's start with some E, okay? Any subset E in Rn, whose measure is, is, is smooth boundary and, and its measure, let me take it to be one half because by Sternbring and Zumbrun, and Emmanuel Milman who did in local cave case, but Sternbring in the convex case, it's, he knows that the profile is concave, so it's enough to look at these sets for the diplomatic inequality. So if you have such a set, then what would you do? Well, you'd say that it's boundary measure. It's boundary measure uh, is the integral of P zero over the boundary of E. Okay. By the material property, that's the expectation of PT over the boundary of E. Okay. And, and, and we know that this is at least um, a constant root of T times the expectation of the minimum, let me make it a product. Okay, so, so what do we have here? Let so M zero is one half. And, and PT of E is a martingale, right? It's, it's the integral of linear, so that's a martingale, so the integral is a martingale. So it means that it does, uh, it looks like this, and at some point, it, so at the end, where T goes to infinity, it will go either to zero or to one, typically. Um, and the things that we want, we look at the product of this times my minus this, so we want it to stay as far as possible around the middle, right? We don't, if it reaches zero and one, then we get nothing here. But if we can find a large enough T such that this, this thing stays away from zero and one, then we get a, lo a lower bound for the surface area, for the, the, inter the interface between E and its complement. Okay, so the game here is to show that, that there's not, that to bound the quadratic variation of this process, the speed in which it, it goes up and down. And in fact, um, okay, I, I'll just, okay, I'll, I'll say the proposition. So it's possible, it's not difficult to, to bound the correct variation. Um, okay, so, so let me just write it. So if I look at D of MT, uh, it's, it's, it's something of this sort, where VT is the integral over E of X minus. And, and it's not so um, it of X dx. And if you look at, at this thing square, it's most the operator norm of the covariance. Okay, so AT is the covariance matrix of the thing. So what, what you obtain is a reduction. Let me write the proposition and explain. This proposition was used in all over the, so by Dan and, and, and in 12 and then Liev and Pala. And then Chen, 20. After a moment, you tell me it was used by Stratonovich in the 50s. Uh, and that's the following proposition. Um, so, so fix some t larger than zero, and suppose that um, is that you know that the expectation of, of so from zero to t from large time t you know that the um, the operator norm of, of the covariance matrix is just at most some some number. So I'll the right okay I'll put it one over eight. But it's just some universal constant. Don't, don't be too attached to it. Then I immediately get a lower bound for the Poincare constant of the original measure. Yeah. Um, so eventually it goes either to zero or to Yeah, exactly. So this goes to zero. That's a good point. So this, so but okay, this goes to zero, right? I mean, you know, that this is at most one over T. So it, it behaves, okay. So first of all, yeah. So if I look at something like the operator norm of AT, how does it look like? Um, so it starts at, so suppose that you are isotropic. Let's suppose it begin with isotropic measure. So it starts at one. 
and you know that it's going to decay here to, to, to it's more than one over it decays actually yeah, it decays to zero and you are worried about something like this <laughs> that's that's what you're worried about that it goes up before it goes down nobody was able to so by the way or, or, yeah okay um so let me before I move to the, the I'll move to the other application now. I just tell you that this reduces um, concurrent inequalities um, to study of the growth of, of AT. So this was the approach that was taken in this business uh, by, 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 these, by these people. Uh, and by the way, all, already here you lose. A, I mean, if you want to prove KLS, you lose a K log n already in this proposition because operator norm is already kind of a log n ish thingy because it's a maximum thing. Um, yeah, but but and and how the way people do it, so but, but to reduce matters to studying the growth of the covariance of of PT, we have this process which is here, and all we care is how does the covariance behave? How does it decay to zero? And is it does it decay in a very integrable way? That's that's what we care. Yes. Uh, so how, how did Rodin come up with this sort of magic thing that defined these lines? Like, like it began with uh, conventionalization with random. So, so it's not like localization like a thing before. So yeah, yeah. The conventionalization is, old, is much, much older, much, much yeah, older. Okay. The so stochastic is new and, and, and the so continuous. It's like, what if you just have epsilon instead of one, basically? And then, exactly. And then, that's and then they go to zero, and then, oh, I get the Gaussian factor. Wow. I guess that's it. Yeah, yeah, so uh -huh. yes, <laughs> so that must yeah. Have been exciting. yeah, absolutely. It was exciting. Um, yeah, anyway, but then you need to set the goals of AT, and then people differentiate AT, and this involves some third order tensor. And and all people here use some bounds for the third order tensor. So, so Eldan used the thin shell, and he bounded the third order tensor by using things related to thin shell, and he got this. Uh, Equality with up to log n that you can connect KLS to Sin Shell. Uh, Liven Pala and Chen, they use some, uh, Chen specifically, use some regularity uh, of the growth of this AT. So I'm not going to go any further in this direction, um, mainly because I want to, to, to move to a new application, but that's at least, I hope I gave you, I indicated at least how one may use this method to prove concrete up inequality. And this reduced matters to, to, to understanding the covariance. Of this random localization things. Okay. Oh. Paper. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now the second application I want to present is much more uh, simple in the sense that the actual computations are, are, are much easier, and and that's that's this is the application to complex waste inequalities. So. Um, Okay, so this is the following theorem. Um, so actually, I don't know any proof of this theorem without stochastic realization. It would be nice to find a proof without that. Um, okay, it's, it's only about homomorphic functions. Um, if you don't remember what it means, take a polynomial. Okay, that's simple enough. Uh, and this is from course 18. I do that. And uh, let's assume that, I mean, it's, there are many versions, but let's make this version f of zero equals zero. And let's look at the levels at the zero set. Okay, so this is some kind of a surface passing through the origin in, in, in CN. Then the claim that as in Gromov's inequality, the, the, let's take the Gaussian measure, you can take many other ones. So if you take the Gaussian measure and look at the measure of its enlargement of Z, it is at least what happens for the linear function. Okay, so this is a bit like Gromov's inequality, but you know what is the fiber. Okay, in the Romovic case, you know what is the fiber, uh, we take the fibers to zero. This is the large fiber. In Gromov's theorem, you don't know which fibers to take, but here it's much, much easier. Okay, and this, um, this is related to, to known things. So um, the, this, this is actually 
So if in the case where R goes to zero, when you only look for about the surface itself and how it grows, this was, uh, this was known many years ago. This goes back to Ruthis, however, and Lelong. So they proved the following. They proved that if you look on the surface, it's pretty big. Okay, so it's not. Um, well, um, um, okay, I'll write it this way, but it's ridiculous. But okay, I'll, I'll still write it this way. So you know that this surface is big, and here we say that the dev is big. And there are versions for minimal surfaces. Um, so there is a version from the 70s due to Osterman, uh, Hoffman, and um, um, Alexander Hoffman and Osterman from 74. And there, is a, and there is a version due to Simon Brandon and Hung from, from 2017. Um, let me just tell you that there are many variants here. So you can, if, you, if f of zero is not zero, then there is a version. If you, you can also lower bound, give a shower bound to the volume of uh, sections that do not pass through zero by according to the distance from the origin. Um, you can apply some, replace the Gaussian by any B holomorphic image of the Gaussian because everything is, 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 is holomorphically equivalent. I don't know, I don't know, I don't have a conjecture for the minimal surface analog of this theorem and I don't know a proof without stochastic realization. Um, okay, so let's, let's discuss its proof. So what would you do? So the idea of the proof, um, so, so this, okay, so, so we have the following proposition. So the claim is that we may take the Gaussian measure, okay? And we may decompose it, we can find some needle decomposition, like in stochastic needle decomposition. Um, so uh, there exists a, a pancake decomposition, if you want. Um, with the following property. So, um, so gamma n uh, is the average of these other densities. So I, I call the random measure mu infinity just because it's the limit where t goes to infinity of some of, of mu t. Okay, so this is a random, prob random uh, probability measure. And uh, such that, um, so first of all, New probability one, uh, new infinity is a complex Gaussian measure. So this means that it's supported in some affine subspace, complex subspace, and it has density um, um, Z minus uh, B uh, R some, some uh, um, uh, uh, capital B uh, over two, some, and this is a Hermitian matrix. Okay, so this is a complex Gaussian measure um, supported in a K dimensional subspace. Complex, uh, everything is complex here. Uh, a fine subspace. and centered at the point of Z. Okay, so let's, let's draw this proposition. So we have Z, that's a surface of dimension N minus K, the zero set of F. And we kind of decompose the Gaussian measure around it into pancakes. So these things are Gaussian. So these are not disjoint. They're just those in this joint. It can be, this is the composition. These are K dimensional pancakes. And these are all Gaussian measures on each space centered at a point of Z all the time and a covariance and covariance with most identity. So, uh, and more of it is in the Gaussian. Okay, that's, that's, that's the proposition that will prove by socialization. 
And let's just explain why, why does it imply the, the theorem. Um, so, so, well, uh, gamma n of z plus the R neighborhood of z is the expectation of new infinity of, of z plus r by the, it's the composition, I wrote, yeah, that's the composition. And this is at least new infinity only at the center point, right? Because it's in z, it's, I can only take the center point and take the neighborhood uh, on, only there. Um, Okay, but this is in k dimensional subspace, and mu infinity is a, a Gaussian of smaller covariance identity. So it's um, the image under the a linear contraction of the standard Gaussian, right? It's a Gaussian which is more centered. So, so it is a, at least gamma k of uh, b zero k, which is what what, what I said zero r, which is what I said, which is um, gamma n. Okay, so the main thing was this decomposition. Um, that's the main thing. And now let me prove the proposition. Um, so the idea of the proof is to um, balance marking on a fiber. Okay, so what, 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 how would you construct this, this, this uh, the composition? So mu infinity is going to be the limit when t goes to infinity of some measures mu t, okay? Uh, these measures mu t are, are, are going to be the, the stochastic realization measures, but with some driving matter, which is not entirely, uh, it's not identity. And now it's crystallization. Uh, what you get always is the original measure times the Gaussian factor. But here, for simplicity, we start with the Gaussian measure. So this means that it will be just a Gaussian, right? So, so um, let's, um, okay, it will be, uh, um, so d mu t, its density with respect to uh, the Lebesgue measure in z is going to be some, okay, it's going to be, uh, a Gaussian factor, so one minus one half, and and uh, at the point d mu t at z. Okay, so there is a center which I call it uh, b, b of um, um, b of mu t, its center or b t, and then there is uh, um, this matrix. Okay, let's let me b t. Let me just call it. It depends on mu t, but b t uh, times. Uh, this thing and there is some normalizing factor. These are probability measures. Okay. Um, and what is the dynamics? I'm going to start, of course, with, with, with a mu zero, is just the Gaussian. So, so I mean, it means that uh, um, B zero is identity, and this can be the, the center is, is zero. Okay. And what is the dynamics of the center? Okay, so just, I mean, I told you, uh, uh, um, this is the starting measure, right? It's classic equalization, starting from this thing. And, but I still did not tell you what is the driving matrix, okay? But what's the dynamics um, of, 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 bit of, this, of this Gaussian measure? So if you remember, um, um, okay, so let's, let's denote uh, sigma t to be, so bt minus one times the driving matrix because uh, uh, the, we want the if you remember it was the covariance. So at was the covariance. We had the, the dbt was at ct wt. So and this was the covariance, which is b inverse, right? So so that's I want to define that thing. Um, then dbt, the dynamics of the and I want to prefer to work with that matrix. So uh, the dynamic of the balance will be just sigma t d, 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 w, t. Okay, so that's the uh, diffusion matrix of, 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 of b, t. And what's, um, you can write down, the, I mean, okay, from using ETO formula, you can write the, the formula for d of b, t. I think I almost wrote it down earlier. 
So this, of course, becomes more and more concave. So to be some positive definite matrix, and what you get is B T sigma T sigma. I mean, that's what you get when you reprove the 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 lemma with it of form as a So so this is the dynamics. These are the rules of 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 of, of the situation. B T. So I need to choose. I didn't tell you what is the. This is that I can decide which larger matrix I want. Okay, and this dictates how B T is going to move in space and how the uh, how capital BT is going to, to, to behave. And now just know that always uh, BT is at least identity, at least be zero, it's going up. It's less identity, so at least that thing is, is fine. This, even in the limit covariance is one, I don't need to take care about that. What do I need to take care of? Two things. So we need to choose a driving matrix. And I'll, I mean, I'll oh, we need to choose CT or sigma T, it's the same. Uh, I prefer or, or sigma T, which is better to work with. So that a few things happen. So first of all, I want the process to be no, no explosion in finite time, just I like it. It does not explode, right? I mean, you can see from the equations that I wrote, From this equation, we can see that I can take a large sigma so that this will explode in finite time, but I want not to explode that. Okay. And second thing, I want the center BT to belong to Z always. Okay. I want this to happen. That never leave, never leave the, the, the zero set. And third, I want to get a panic of dimension K, right? Remember, from I need to get something for the dimensional space. What does it mean uh, to get a panic cake? So I want the Gaussian measure to become more and more constant on some subspace. So in other words, if la no, no, okay, no, create dimensional subspace. I'm going to, so it, it's going to be a singular, depends on the driving matrix. So if it's identity, you are right. Here it will be the generate matrix. It just doesn't contract. It'll be the generate matrix. Yeah, thanks for this. Question. Yeah, okay, so, uh, um, yeah, and, and, and okay, let's write. So what they require is that all eigenvalues except for the K ones of this thing should go to infinity as they go to infinity. This should, thing should have a probability one. And, and lambda one, lambda two, et cetera, are eigenvalues of, of, um, of B. Okay, very good. So let, let's 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 arrange that to happen. Um, well, first of all, there is a useful fact. I hope it goes to Kakutani. I'm not sure. Tell me if I'm wrong. So, um, base. So useful fact is that if f is holomorphic, and and you have some um, a, a, a complex process like this. So this is a complex matrix. Then, then f of b t is a martingale. So there's no into term. I'm sure that in the harmonic case, so what can kind of prove that if it's harmonic and that's a bonnet motion, then, then it's a martingale. I think that this generalizes that fact. I don't know if it's in his paper or not. Okay, but that's a classic. It's a classic fact. And this means that if I look at d of F of BT. So what's F of the fact? So we have the possible B. So there is no no ito term. Okay, so we just have a dynamic. We start on Z, as I said, and and the dynamic is such that I just need to to discuss the first order term. So what we need, so because of this equation, so what we need in order to satisfy the second requirement is that we need to know that the direction where you go, so is always tangential. To the surface, so we need to know that the image the, uh, of the matrix sigma t is always uh, contained in the tangent space to z at the current point. Bt. That's this is the requirement to, to make sure that this holds true. Okay, and, and okay, let me just tell you the solution, and then we verify that it works. Um, so what we take. 
is sigma t, it should be beta to the minus one half times the projection onto the tangent space. The tangent space is dimension a minus k because it's regular f zero is the regular point of f. Um, so I need to be able to put bt of minus one half. So that this this is all true. Let's call this uh, maybe et or ft. So this is satisfied. And now there is a nice lemma. And, and, and okay, and, and this means that dbt, what is it? Because of the minus one half, I'm going to get exponential equation. Just this. So this um, this is power one in bt in total. And that's a rank, and that's a projection onto that thing. So this goes at most exponentially. So this is defined for all times. Very good. And now I just need to explain why the eigenvalues go to, to infinity. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is true. So df of bt will be zero because the image of sigma t is in the tangent space to z. So this implies, as you said, that d of f of, I don't have an eta term, no. I, I, thought I would be, okay, if f was not holomorphic, then I have, this would be, uh, 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 the, the derivative time this plus an e total plus the hessian of f or something so this does not this term does not exist for me this is why i'm happy and you, i only need to care about the first order approximation if i work with complex matrices yeah exactly i, I don't need to care yeah i only need this is enough for me. just the first order dynamics is enough for me to know that you're staying on z okay and then there is a lemma with one line proof maybe i'll leave it for you or not uh, so the number is that this implies this. This is now an ODE question. This implies, and, and you know that the dimension of ET is is n minus k. So the claim is that this implies that lambda k plus one of BT goes to infinity. Okay, and since my and, and this is a one line proof, but since my time is up, then I'll, I'll think I'll I'll, I'll 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 stop here. Okay, but that's an ODE question that you can. Um, solve for yourself. Okay, so this is all I want to say in this class and in this uh, lecture series. And if you want to know more, I'm going to give you the second semester at Nisra, at Wine Institute, uh, a graduate course, not just five hours, maybe like 20, 30 hours on this subject. And if you want the Zoom link, you can mail me. Okay, thank you very much. Wednesdays, uh, I think at 2 p.m., so it'll be 7 a.m. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but maybe the video could be. Okay. Any questions? I don't know. There's no martingale on the, okay. Let's let's take the case on the circle in, in, in R2. There's no martingale that stay on the circle. No process like this, which stay on the circle. Why? Um, because if it's a martingale, no, no, no. If, he, if, the, if the curvature on the circle, you cannot live a martingale because the, sure, yeah, right, this is non zero unless it's constant. Okay, if we, okay, so if one to engineer f of dt that is always equal to zero, right? Yeah, but all I'm saying is that if f, x, f, if f of x, y is x, so then I cannot. Okay, so in this case, if I want my process to stay on the circle, it starts. I, I want this function to be constant. I cannot. Okay. So in order to be able even to think about the melting on a fiber or a function, they have to be indefinite. That's that's a prerequisite before even you you, you begin discussing this question. If if the if the Hessian is, is definite, positive or negative definite, you have a little term and the melting would not stay on that. Right? I mean there is some um and then the beauty of the allomorphic function which makes things so elegant I, I, okay. Is that... Yes. Yeah. That's that. This this is what makes things clean. How do you reconcile this story with the story of the I think it's all. I think it's So this is much much easier. Than that. So in in that case, you cannot control the fiber, right? In the kind of the real case, right? I mean, you 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 have no chance to say that this specific fiber is large. It could be tiny. And, and you don't know that most of the mass is in large fibers. Here's, you know, 
most of the masses in large fibers. Uh, the, the, this, the, the, uh, I can tell you that if you have a fiber of distance from the origin is R, no, R is taken, uh, the, the, the capital R, then, then the, the, its neighborhoods are at least, at least what you get for a uh, uh, flat here. Uh, it's much. It will move. It will move. Move out of the fiber and then return. That's what you suggest. Well, I'm saying it will pick out. Of, you don't know which one, but it will pick out the correct fiber. It will pick out. I, I don't believe that. So for this theorem, I don't believe that there should be a probabilistic proof because that's a rare phenomenon. And there is, you can have a situation where most of the mass is in tiny fibers. Okay, so there is. You don't know how to put the fiber. You have to increase the dynamic of the fiber and fiber. But if it's so rare. It's so rare, there's no, I don't think there's a probability. Okay, here, that's a, in the Lomophic case, it's, 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 I think it's an easier phenomenon. And, and it, when you can engineer such a proof. But still, I mean, this is a simple statement. I would expect a proof without proxy processes, but no, no, no. More questions? Okay, thank you guys. Bye -bye.